They did not see that one coming. Why are you gonna cry? Oh. Huh? Huh? You gonna cry? You gonna cry? You gonna cry? Huh? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie cheap shots. For this list, we're looking at the dirtiest and most sly kicks, punches, slaps, bites, and stabs that have ever been put on the big screen. Just so you know, a spoiler alert is probably in order. Number 10, Low Blow by Bear, Cinderella Man. I swear to God, Moyle, win, lose, or draw. Thanks, Joey, for all of it. In the climax of this true story about boxer James J. Braddock, the Cinderella Man is getting the better of his fearsome rival, Max Bear. Braddock is a huge underdog, and in a desperate attempt to regain his upper hand, Bear delivers a full-forced low blow that enrages Braddock's trainer. These actions demonstrate to the audience the distinction between the two fighters. Braddock is your honest by-the-book boxer, while Bear is willing to do whatever it takes to gain a competitive edge. You won this one. It's a cinch. It is yours. When all said and done, though, the everyman stands tall as the new heavyweight champ. Winner and the new world <laughs> Number 9. Beating Your Brother After the Bell, Warrior Two brothers go head-to-head -head in the final of an MMA tournament with way more on the line than just the $5 million prize. He's not your brother, right? All right. He's in the way. This sports drama expertly portrays every hit in an MMA fight, but it's the one that lands after the horn sounds that strikes the hardest. Tommy, the favorite, has already spent a whole round pummeling his older brother Brendan, but still feels the need to land a dirty right shot. Brothers always fight, although this takes it to a whole new level. Sit, sit, sit. Sit right there. Sit down. Look at me. Sit down. Number 8. Mini-Me goes for the mojo. Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. Mission control. The swinger has landed. Yeah. If anyone has the right to use a few dirty moves to try and win a fight, it may be Dr. Evil's pint-sized clone. Austin is attempting to foil Dr. Evil's plan on the moon when Mini-Me ferociously attacks him with an eye gouge and kick to the face, followed by what is seemingly a peace offering. Peace? Huh? You brought my glasses. Bless your little heart. Psych! That's not right. He was totally faking it. However, it's after Powers nearly kills Mini-Me that the cheapest attack is landed. Mini-Me fakes being unconscious before getting up and biting into Austin's rocket ship. He's like a dog or something. Poor little bugger. <laughs> Number 7. Kate's vs. Hammond 48 hours. I gave you 48 hours to come up with something and the clock's running. Yeah, well, maybe I don't like the way you asked me, all right? In this action comedy, we're given a fight scene that begins with both men landing dirty blows to try to down the other. You tell me the truth or you're gonna get the living shit beat out of you. Are you gonna kick my ass now? I think you lost your mind, Cates. Cates, a no-nonsense cop, has been forced to work with convict Reggie Hammond to solve a murder. And tensions between the two soon boil over. <laughs> Cates lands the first sly blow by distracting Hammond with his handcuffs. But Hammond cleverly reacts by slamming the car door into the cop's shin. <laughs> The ensuing fight is slightly more honorable, minus the odd trash can being thrown, of course. What's going on here? Nothing. It's all right, I'm a cop. Yeah, sure, get your hands above your head. Number six, Napoleon slaps Kip, Napoleon Dynamite. Stay home and eat all the freaking chips, Kip. This oddball comedy was never afraid to use a bit of physical humor, and Uncle Rico's perfectly aimed steak throw is just one more example of that. <sighs> What the heck are you doing? That's what I'm talking about. However, when Napoleon sneakily slaps his brother, it's one of the funniest moments of the film. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. 
Kip tells his younger sibling not to be jealous that he's been chatting online with babes all day, and then dares Napoleon to try and hit him. Try and hit me, Napoleon? What? I said come down here and see what happens if you try and hit me. Napoleon cleverly uses the doorbell distraction to get in a quick slap with the left hand before scuttling off to answer the door. At least he didn't break out the nunchucks. I'll go get it. Jeez! Number 5. Bad Blackmail, Burn After Reading Osborne Cox. And you, I take it, are Mr. Black? Yes, I am. The Coen brothers are masters in the art of the farcical black comedy, and Burn After Reading gives us another classic moment as the clueless Chad tries to blackmail former CIA analyst Osborne Cox. What you're engaged in is blackmail? That is a felony, that's for starters. The parents is to be accepted. I'm a mere good Samaritan. Chad attempts to be cool and mysterious, but this facade only angers Cox, who grows increasingly irate as he recognizes that his blackmailer is really a blithering idiot. As soon and as I'll you give us the way. money, dickwad! Cox finally reaches his limit with Chad and lands a swift right jab to his perfectly formed nose. You f Give it to me, fucker! I know who you are, fucker! Number four, Commodus's final insult. Gladiator. The murderous Commodus is one of the great movie villains, so it's not surprising he was more than happy to land a cheap shot on the restrained and unarmed protagonist Maximus before their final duel. The gladiator defied an emperor. Striking story. Commodus menacingly speaks to Maximus, and the tension of the scene makes viewers feel as though something bad is about to transpire. Now that people want to know how the story ends, only a famous death will do. This is dramatically confirmed, as Commodus thrusts a small blade into Maximus' side in a vain attempt to give himself a chance of beating the former general in the Colosseum. Smile for me now, brother. Just as Russell Crowe proved in Cinderella Man, though, it takes more than a cheap shot to keep him down. Do you think I'm afraid? I think you've been afraid all your life. Number three, Deadly Sucker Punch, Million Dollar Baby. In this corner, the challenger, Maggie Fitzgerald, in the red corner. The most deadly cheap shot on our list is featured in this drama about women's boxing. Main character Maggie has worked her way through the ranks to earn a title fight against a brutal ex-prostitute who has a reputation as a dirty boxer. You do that one more time, it'll cost you a point, you hear me? That is proven with disastrous consequences as a punch from behind, after the bell, knocks Maggie out. As she falls to the canvas, the spirited Maggie lands on a stool, breaking her neck and paralyzing her in the process. Does it hurt much? Don't hurt at all. Number two, bringing a sword to a gunfight, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> One of the most famous scenes in movie history sees legendary archaeologist Indiana Jones mercilessly gun down a sword-spinning warrior. This action-adventure film has Indy in a tiring chase through the streets of Cairo, looking to find the kidnapped Marion. A skilled fighter who spins his sword like a baton confronts Jones, but our hero clearly has no time for his flamboyant attacker. He whips out his revolver and, with one blast, puts down the over-the-top swordsman. Hey, whatever gets the job done, right? Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Let's dance. Be a good little fella now and open the door. Number 
one, out of commission, the Karate Kid. Good morning, out of commission. But Sensei, I can beat this guy. Under instruction from the evil Sensei John Kreese, Bobby Brown is told to do whatever it takes to get Daniel out of the competition. But I'll be disqualified. Out of commission. Reluctantly, Bobby delivers a jumping kick to Daniel's knee in the very first attack of the semi-final confrontation. This severely injures Daniel, who writhes in pain as Bobby begs for his forgiveness. Bobby Brown of the Cobra Kai has been disqualified! It is the ultimate underhanded move from the Cobra Kai dojo. But still, it sets up the famous climax of this popular karate flick. Daniel LaRusso is going to fight? Daniel LaRusso is going to fight! Now isn't this what it's all about? Do you agree with our list? Okay. Which unexpected hits upset your moral fiber? <laughs> For more fight-filled top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.